Welcome, my name is Tracy Cook and welcome to the podcast series, Victim to Victory. This series gives a voice to those who have overcome challenges in all forms that dare greatly to share their real stories. Amazing humans that have, been, that have seen hope and risen above those adversities to become victorious. That go on to support and inspire others to do the same. Today, we are welcoming and giving a voice to April. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy, for having me. I'm very honored to be here. No problem. So I really want to dig deep. We're having a chat just before the show and I really like your, um, your personality that comes through not only on your social media, but in the story that you actually shared with me. Thank you. And I was very, um, I was very moved uh, when I spoke to you and read your story. Yep. And thank you for being very brave for stepping forward. No worries. Let us get to know April. Who is April? And let us know your background, your beginnings, and take us on your journey with us. Yeah, that's a, it's a big story. It um, is. I'll, I'll try to, <laughs> I'll try to summarize it. Uh, so obviously with my accent, I'm from the States. Uh, so I was born and raised in Kentucky um, by a stepdad. My biological dad wasn't a part of my life. Um, so I was raised very by a stepdad. At one stage to what I thought was a Prince Charming in the beginning, um, very, very, ticked all the boxes so to speak um, and then as things progressed and went on I found so what, what were the boxes what were the boxes that he ticked when you first met when we first met it was the maybe the I guess it was the the Hollywood image of the uh -huh. the butterflies and you know the the compliments and the just you know just very very Prince Charming, Prince the, Charming. the tall and successful. He had a job. He didn't, you know, live in his parents' basement and wore shoes. He wore shoes, <laughs> and he didn't aspire to be a musician mm. in a failing band that was never going to go anywhere. It seemed like it ticked all the boxes for what matched for me as far as be having a successful life. Um, at that stage, I didn't know where it would take me, but I knew I wanted to do something successful with my life and my career. So it seemed to tick all of those boxes. Personality, um, good personality, like to joke around. I'm a, I'm a quite a laid back, like to have a good time and not, not be serious all the time type of personality. So he treated you like a princess. In you, the beginning, He yes. was your prince charming. Yes, absolutely. He ticked all the boxes. Ticked all the boxes. Slowly those boxes became unticked. And when they slowly untick, you don't realize they're unticking. Um, it's only when you start to really look back that you go, oh, this is this isn't actually the same person anymore. And you're not sure if it's something you've done or if maybe it's just a phase. Maybe mm -hmm. it's they're, going through s mm -hmm. they're going through something personal or something at work and they're just not opening up. Mm -hmm. And then again, a few years down the line, you look back and the person you're now married to isn't even a re resemblance of the person that you met in the beginning. Wow. So you become very much of a, oh, is it, maybe it's me. Um, and when there's a lot of negative um, kind of emotional abuse that you don't realize has been happening and a lot of isolating you from your friends and your family that you don't realize it's happening until you look back in hindsight mm. and you go, oh, actually. So you were, you were kind of being groomed yes. to not seeing your yes. friends and your social circuit, circle, yes. uh, financial? F completely financial. Completely Complete financial, financial control. Yes. So he was almost grooming you to... Absolutely. Right. And even the financial control, it was like when we bought a house together, it was going to be just in his name because, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't remember the reasoning that he gave me and the money... Um, like you pay a certain amount of money for rent and things like that like mm. I didn't even realize then I'm um, being in my mid-20s that oh this this isn't normal you're this being isn't, conditioned yes yes right. being very controlled very conditioned with the finances side of things um, and even in the beginning you know, very complimentary on my parents and things like that and then that slowly started to fade and I, I remember a specific day where he said oh, you've got beautiful legs from here down so it was just those small things that by the end of our relationship um, and by the end of our marriage that I, would, that I felt like I, no one else would love me, no one else would want me. So um, all the negative things, they stick and the, the emotional scars, no one can see, yep. but they last forever. 
Yeah. Um, and you, you know, it, I'm 10 years on past this, and I can still have times where my um, husband and the father of my children, who is an amazing guy, um, who I don't tell enough how amazing he is, he might just <sighs> sigh, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I freeze and I go, "What's wrong?" And he's like, "Just breathing, nothing." You know, and he's he understands. He knows what I've been through, and he's very patient with it. But it's still... It's a trauma. It is. It is. It's you know, a trauma. If I get a text from him and I say, I'm running late, etc., I'll be there soon. And he just says, okay. I read it as that I'm going to be in trouble, that there's going to be an issue when I get home about that. So you, how, how long were you uh, in a relationship with your uh, ex-husband? Um, all up, I think it was about five years total. Five years. Yeah, yeah. So you were made to feel unworthy. Oh, completely, completely. Wow. By the end, um, and then my weight um, had. I started putting on weight because that was, you know, I'm, why you were self sabotaging. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, food, you know, alcohol. We went out quite a bit, so we ate out a lot, and we went out. Um, and then he came home really angry one night, and I still don't know what he was so angry about and um, that was the, that was the first and only time that he was ever physically abusive with me and he took me by the arm and I was I was like I don't know what's happening really um, and I still looking back don't really know what the, the, the issue was was and he took me by the wrist and he kind of threw me into the kitchen mm -hmm. and I said this is not happening like I'm not doing this tonight and he put his arms across the door frame mm. and he said only it's like well let's see you get past me well he's much taller than me mm. so I just kind of went under the arm and went around mm. and I don't remember much else that really happened but I remember my head getting slammed into a wall um, until and then I kind of woke up with him crying over me apologizing um, and I still have like a big knot on the back of the head that's a, phys oh, wow. a physical a physical scar yeah. of a physical event that yeah um, and I used to always say if a guy ever let it laid a mm. hand on me he better be willing to run and then when they do you actually don't know what to do because you feel like you've lost all power. Yep. And if you do leave or if you say, that's it, I'm out, what else are they going to do? What's yep. the next step? So once that physical has happened, um, the emotional you can try to try to justify in your head as much as you want to. Yep. Um, and we do that. We do. We try to justify the emotional abuse because yeah. we can't see anything physical yeah. we don't necessarily have to have outside scars our scars are on the inside Absolutely. and when I think you are being emotionally abused and I hear this from a lot of people that have been emotionally abused mm. there seems to be a common denominator and it is you try to justify it yes well I should have known he didn't like pork chops right on a Tuesday this was my fault this yes was, I should have I shouldn't have you know stayed out with my friends as late you know mm. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have done this oh I've it's it's my fault you you start to self-blame and try to try to find answers I think as women or and men I think just as humans we try to find an answer for everything in life yeah. and so I think we try to look at that as it's our fault and when you have someone blaming you for everything that goes wrong and you know I remember having the flu once and being home just sick with poor 40 degree temperatures and he would come home why, why um, and not just in it, I've put it into even my professional life if mm. if if someone seems like possibly not the type of person that may be aligned with my values yeah they don't I don't work with that um, and that's a great postured trait yeah, to have yeah posture and having, and I, 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 I teach this to my, my teenager. Yeah. You're better off having five trusted friends that you can rely on at any time yes. than 3,000 Facebook friends. Yes, you know, exactly. Um, it's it's a, a very different scenario, but uh, I think it's very important mm. to be able to be postured and connect with like-minded yes. people. Yes. So you've realized your own self-worth mm. you've you've probably it sounds like to me you've been in that relationship yeah and you've known what you don't like yes and what isn't going to move you or propel you into your future relationships where you can go on to be a better person yes so yeah. that's fantastic yeah. that's a fantastic journey yeah and talk us through like uh, the recovery and the transition talk us through um 
the doubts that you had along your your journey that made you what made you overcome those doubts when you were transitioning transitioning period is quite hard i think a lot of women that have been through that situation find um always looking over your shoulder to see mm. you know afraid that they're you know they're uh, mm -hmm. person will be there and for me I had the ad adv advantage so to speak of moving countries once my yeah. once I met my um, well, once once we went from friends to more than friends um, I had the advantage I'm 11,000 miles away from the person who caused me that harm so yeah I don't fear that he's going to be knocking on my door causing mm. me any any harm so I am quite grateful and lucky in that scenario and I know a lot of women who go through domestic lucky. aren't aren't that lucky um, that what, it's, what advice it's a cycle. Would you give them for looking over your shoulder what advice would you give do you think oh. especially coming from a nursing and and health health care yeah. position as well what it's a tough question but it is a tough question I would say one of the biggest things that helped me overcome a lot of my self-doubts and things of that nature when um, our first was born I mentioned my daughter was born very prematurely um, and when she was born my dad was back in the States dying of cancer so I hit that six-week postpartum brick wall and my emotions were just there and so much that I had suppressed like of the of the abuse and of the transition and the everything I had just suppressed because that's how I very immaturely dealt with things at the time of just suppress it pretend it never happened mm -hmm. and just move on with life because that's what we do when we're women that's right what we just we do we, we put just our big girl on. pants on we and just put them on and deal with it yeah. and we just move on yeah um, but that's not always the healthiest way to deal with life um, yeah. when there's things that go on we sometimes need great point that additional mm. help and I have absolutely zero um, shame in saying that when I hit that that breaking point I sought a therapist yeah. and I saw someone and no shame in that at all absolutely all absolutely yeah um, because it was it was beyond my f this gets to a point sometimes where it's beyond your friends being able to guide you you yes. need a trained professional yes. sometimes to just help you understand because mm. I had a lot of blame and for my daughter being born prematurely even though there was mm. nothing that I did and that's very common with with parents of prems mm. um, that we find something that you know oh, I, I ate rare steaks so this is probably you know it's, it's all these self blames and that has yeah. nothing to do with my with my past it's just something part of being a prem mom mm. and and so I, I just hit that breaking point and when I saw um, my counselor and we worked through a lot of that we brought up a lot about my past and things like that mm -hmm. and looked at your self-worth and your self-value yeah. and I remember one of the things that I was saying to her I was saying I, I blame myself for this and I blame myself for that and she said to me and these are powerful words that these are this is um, almost six years on and whenever I'm talking to someone who's in a situation um, of self-blame with um, uh, relationship issues or with um, premature birth or whatever the issue is if the tables were turned and mm. you were telling and I was telling you what I'm what I've what you've just said to me mm -hmm. would you turn around and say you know what Tracy you're right it is all your fault mm. And I said, oh, no. Yeah. And she was like, yep. then you need to be. That is very powerful. Yes. She said, you need to be the mm. type of friend to other people that you, you need to be the type of friend to yourself that you are to other people. Yeah. And that really put it in perspective. Yep. She was like, would you, wow. you know, if, if someone said, it's my fault that my daughter was born prematurely, would you say, you're right? Mm. You, you shouldn't have had all that you know rare steak or that ice cream that self-serve ice cream really that did it so true that's it really is. enlightening it is that it is. is really true and I thought wow that is so powerful and that has stuck mm. with me um, I think that's gonna stick with me for now, six too. years yeah that's really powerful yeah mm. um, it, it's a really powerful message that she gave me and I walked away with that session I walked away feeling almost like I had a weight lifted like I was allowed to let myself not blame me anymore like for a breakthrough. Yeah, um, and I was allowed to be human. I'm, a, you know, and I tell my friends going through life, you're allowed to be human. You're allowed to cry. You're allowed to be mad. You're allowed to be sad. Whatever it is, you're allowed to be human. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really a big lesson that I learned as well because I have my dad dying, my daughter in the NICU here and I felt yeah. very torn and I was trying to hold it all together and be strong and especially after coming out of such a, a traumatic situation yeah. yes um, so it's all happening. yes so I was trying to be that strong person yeah and you know and my, my therapist she was like you're you're allowed to 
to you're allowed to cry yeah. you're allowed to be human you're allowed to be upset about anything in your life mm. that's happened you know um, it, it's just how we deal with it from there once mm -hmm. you have, have those emotions if you stay down it's a matter of getting back up yeah and that that those and it's tools, how we get back up isn't it exactly exactly yep. and it's you know it can either it can either be something that constantly pulls us down or it can be something that empowers us to go you know what I'm worthy of love um, I'm going to go on and live the best life that I can. I'm not going to constantly be the victim. And yeah. so when you, when I saw your original post, I was like, well, I'm not a victim. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to apply for this. And then I was like, well, actually I've been through quite a lot, you know, when, so I'll, the story I have, I think is kind of empowering and it's not about we, we all go through life and we all go through drama and we all go through trauma and it's how we deal with it and it's yep. what we use it for that I think is that's where our message and that's where our power is and yep. I think that's how we win um, and I think you've said this in a lot of your your podcasts and your other videos that I've seen as well so far is that's that's how we really move forward and I think that's mm. also how we heal is having that power and going you know what I'm going to do mm. whatever it is that we aspire to do um, and it's funny you touched on the point where you said you were scrolling past when I was asking for people who wanted to apply for mm. this series victim to victory because you're not the first person to say that yeah the amount of, of people, a, a handful of people, have turned around and said, oh, Tracy, I scrolled past and I thought, I'm not a victim. No. And I had to re-scroll and yeah. think, oh, you know what? Actually, I have been. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I am. Yeah. And I was very enlightened by that and very humbled by that. The people actually took notice, revisited, and reevaluated yeah. their life and their journey to go, you know what? I need to tell my story and I need to air my voice and yeah. to help others. Yeah. Uh, just, just like your brave self. Yeah. And I was very um, humbled in the way that people approached the responses and openly shared their stories yeah. with me. And I'm really glad that, and it sounds funny, that I stopped the scroll. <laughs> yes, yes. Because by doing that, it's changing lives. Yes. Literally. Yes. Yes. And your story stood out so much. <laughs> it, it spoke. It, it spoke. I, I felt. I found an in, instant connection. Yeah. To different words that you were saying. Yeah. And I did read it uh, three or four times. Yeah. And I thought, wow, this. Um, there's a bit more to this. Yeah. I was reading deep. between the lines. <laughs> I thought I have to get this amazing, amazing yeah. woman on and uh, and let her be part of this series yeah. because I want you now to tell me yes what are you doing now with this superwoman <laughs> empowerment that you've got going on <laughs> which is amazing yes and let's touch on what you've recently done in Australia as well yes so the empowerment that I have is number one I am raising two humans to be um, very the best versions of themselves as adults so we have a little girl that we're raising and a little boy um, and Beautiful. we're raising someone's future husband and wife or if they choose to have oh you just maybe tear up then <laughs> If they choose to have a same-sex partner, then that's exactly what we oh, support as well. Very nice. um, <laughs> so we are looking at the bigger picture and being making sure that we're raising the best versions of them as we can, and trying to be um, very open in our in our home. And that hmm. you know what I said is you know you're allowed to be human. Is we we do that with our kids. We don't hide our emotions with our kids if we're upset or you know if I miss my dad who passed away um, not long after my daughter was home from the NICU. Um, Condolences. But thank you um, you know she'll be like oh are you sad today I'm like yeah m mommy just misses grandpa you know and she's like oh here I'll give you a cuddle it's okay to be sad Aww. so so she's m mirroring a lot of the things that we say back mm -hmm. the youngest is too he's still being a tornado so he's 
<laughs> we'll get there with him. Um, but um, I've gone on and I've started my business. Yeah, and I've yeah. Helped so people. 12 weeks in the NICU, very isolating, living in, you know, like I said earlier, in, in limbo. limbo. And once we got home, I wanted to be able to reach out because unless you've been there, you don't know what it's like. So I joined the Tiny Sparks uh, board and volunteer um, as well and did some workshops with parents. And I still am quite active in the NICU community. There's a few Facebook groups just to try to make people feel less isolated in their in that scenario uh, very similar to domestic abuse you feel quite isolated mm -hmm. the same with the NICU um, the most recent thing I did which I know you wanted to talk about today is I took out a drive because my business focuses on general practices um, there was a drive for um, expired medical consumables mm -hmm. to be used on animals that were affected by the bushfires. Mm -hmm. So I put up a video on my Facebook page um, thinking I would get a small box of gathering. The video was viewed over 6,000 times and every day we would, I would come home to boxes at my door or boxes at my office, um, mm -hmm. handmade pou Joey pouches. And, and these are the Australian bushfires that happened this, this year? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's this massive. Is, this is the very, the, the current ones, both local and over east. Lives lost, koalas, kangaroos, kangaroos you um, name it. everything, like millions of... Yes. Um, it's devastating. It, it is. It it's is. It's devastation. It is. And bec on humans, you can't use like some of the expired things, but in animals, they are a little bit more lenient because it's, it's, it's you know, volunteers that are caring for these animals. And it's mm. not medications, it's, it's gauze and it's um, yeah. bandages, mm. um, it's topical creams. And I even actually had some clinics that actually bought brand new things to send as well. So what I originally thought would be this very small, you know, I've, I heard about this um, res rescue collective and I was like, I want to be a part of this. I, I feel like there's something more than just giving oh, yeah. money that, yeah. you know, here's something. And I've, my clinic or my business, its target audience is clinics. So, and my clients are always saying, what do I do with all these ex expired things? Because for accreditation um, and just general day to day, you have to get rid of expired mm -hmm. consumables. And they're always asking me, what do I do with it? And I'm like, you, go, you know, you can donate it to, you know, your veterinarian's office and, or find other organizations. And I thought, this is perfect. I can mm -hmm. actually say, guys, bring it to me. I'll be a drop off hub and I'll get it to where it needs to go. Mm not expecting the um overwhelming the overwhelming which was good old so Aussie amazing spirit. good old aussie spirit um had more companies and clinics and individuals that i could actually probably name i would be afraid to leave someone out um but homemade joey pouches in different sizes um these wooing nests for the birds Aww. and things like that nice. our garage was overflowing um so we finally have gotten that dropped off to the hub um which will see that that gets to where it goes goes on um, to help all the injured and rescued australian wildlife from yes, the australian bushfires yes yes you are amazing <laughs> see i don't see it that way you i see this amazing. is you, just being human <laughs> well that's right it is isn't yeah. it it's just being human it but is. we need more people being human yeah yes. <laughs> we need a lot we more do. of us we do we do we and do. i just um recapping your journey i mean from one country in the States to Australia, domestic violence, premature baby, dad dying from cancer, uh, Nick Yu, and going on to still, you know, uh, uh, volunteer and support and, and raise funds and, and things like that and mm. still support your community mm. and raising two little amazing humans yes. that are being raised, obviously, by very forward-thinking um at parents yes uh is something to definitely feel victorious about yes it, it is i guess if you put it all in that when you put it in that perspective i guess it is. <laughs> when you think, about, when it you like think about it like that yes but yes i just you know i feel like it's um my husband and i's uh, values and um goals in life and our thoughts on you know um so someone once said to me oh what are you going to do if your son my my son mimics everything my daughter does if 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 he if she has her fingernails painted he wants his and someone i don't remember who it was passing is like oh what if he grows up gay it's like well, well then we'll welcome his boyfriend 
That's like, right. <laughs> it will be just, just as, you know, there will be no coming out conversations in our house. It will be you're accepted how you are in our house. I love um, that. And I, I think, absolutely love yeah, that. And I think more families need to um, embrace that, which I know we're not the... I know we're not the the standard on that, but yep. I'm in mean, the same for our daughter. If she yep. were to say, you know, it, you yep. know, it's yep. it's not a. It's about seeing the person as they are. Yep. Appreciating people for people. That yep. everyone's got feelings, yep. and everyone should be supported no matter what their journey is. Yep. And um, Australia is becoming more diverse. Mm. Uh, and I think we do still have that good old Aussie mateship and spirit, yeah. which does keep this country alive, uh, very much so. And we're getting rid of a lot of old stigmatisms now yeah. and welcoming and being more diverse, which yes. I absolutely embrace. Yes, and it's fabulous. I think that is the, the future of this country. Mm. And I get very out, outspoken on that. But that might be another that might be another, <laughs> that might be another webcast. <laughs> <laughs> that might be another one completely. <laughs> and I would uh, what message would you like to stay on closing? Would you like to say on closing today? I guess on closing I'd like to say to anyone that is watching, listening, how are you doing this um, put yourself first sometimes there's nothing wrong with loving people from a distance um, if there's nothing wrong with putting yourself and your life and your happiness first um, there's nothing wrong with um, being a female working <laughs> there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. raising children and working um, but there's nothing wrong with loving yourself and accepting yourself and seeing that one person's opinion on you doesn't mean doesn't define you. Doesn't define you. Um, mm. We def we define who we are. We don't allow everyone else to define who we are. So I think if it, find the power to you find your voice and use use that for to make the light make the world better than it is, mm. um, in however way that is. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very very much. Thank today. you so much. I really appreciate it i can see a part two coming from this <laughs> i definitely can i definitely can so thank you very much april for being brave to to share your story Thanks, you're Chelsea. very much appreciated and you can find our podcast on youtube and the facebook group victim to victory podcast series if you got value from today please subscribe like and comment and i'd like to leave you with a message Step into your power and let your voice roar. Thank you, April. Thank you, Tracy.